Hello, it's uh, Paul Beckwith, and uh, my video just crapped out, so uh, this is just going to be a part two. I'm talking about the ENSO changing. We're in a strong La Nina now, probability <coughs> of going to an El Nino um, by the latter, for the latter part of 2023 is, uh, is getting higher and higher, approaching uh, 50% um, in August, September, October of 2023. Of course, um, the and and uh you know there is a lag from when the uh warming is the greatest so we just go back here um so 2023 should be warmer uh than 2022 approaching the record temperatures that happened in the last super el nino in 2015 2016 and by 2024 we're likely to blow apart the 1.5 degrees celsius uh safe temperature band that was discussed in Paris um, in, in that COP in 2015. Okay, so um, so let's just come here. Um, basically, you know, we need an international center for climate modeling. We need to, to have, you know, what, like we have, uh, you know, CERN and we have super particle physics uh, colliders and huge mega projects, billions of dollars being spent. You know, climate is key. We need an international center for climate modeling with billions of dollars worth of funding. So I just wanted to point that out. Like the Large Hadron Collider at CERN um, is an international collaboration, letting particle physics do together what no single nation can or wants to do on their own. Or you could think of the European Center for Medium Range Weather Forecasts. It produced the most skillful models in the world. You know, we need something uh, in North America, in the U.S., you know, a, a climate center where we can uh, pool a lot of resources and money from different countries and have an initiative. And I'm all, all for this. This is especially maybe this will come about when the world gets hammered in the next few years by the El Nino on top of global warming. So this is a good article that just came out yesterday, a Guardian article. Um, and it's talking about warming of unprecedented heat waves, a warning of unprecedented heat waves as El Nino is set to return in 2023. Scientists say the phenomena coupled with the glowing climate, climate crisis is likely to push global temperatures off the chart. Okay, so the return of the El Nino. So this is a very good article. Um, I'm just going to go through it. I've already talked about a lot of things that are in there, showing you the graphs, showing you some of the science. Talked about um, James Hansen's predictions, his short paper in September 22nd of 2022. So the return of El Nino is gonna, should start later this year in 2023. It'll cause global temperatures to rise off the chart and deliver unprecedented heat waves. Early forecasts suggest El Nino will return later in 2023, exacerbating extreme weather around the globe and making it very likely the world will exceed 1.5 Celsius of warming. The hottest year in recorded history, 2016, was driven by a major El, Ni El Nino. Of course, the El Nino is part of the natural oscillation called ENSO, which is driven by you know, ENSO stands for El Nino Southern Oscillation. It's driven by ocean temperatures and winds in the Pacific. And it switches between El Nino, the warm state where heat's coming out of the ocean, and the cooler counterpart, La Nina, uh, where heat stays in the ocean and builds up in the ocean. And then there's a neutral condition in between. So the last three years, we've had an unusual run of consecutive La Nina or cooling events. This year, um, is already forecasted. So 2023 is already forecast to be hotter than 2022, which global data sets rank. 2022 was the fifth or sixth hottest year on record. But El Nino occurs during the Northern Hemisphere winter and its heating effect takes months, three to four months to be felt. So that means 2024 is when we're likely to set a new global temperature record above the 1.5 Celsius. The greenhouse gases emitted by human activities have driven up average global temperature by about 1.2 Celsius to date. That's relative to the, you know, 1880 to 1910 or 1880 to 1920 uh, temperature baseline, 
you know, don't forget you need to add 0.2 or 0.3 if you're going to refer it to the 1750 baseline, which was the original definition of um, the Industrial Revolution starting. This has already led to catastrophic impacts around the world. You know, we live on the land. The land temperatures have risen much faster than the global temperatures. If you live at elevation, uh, temperatures at high ele higher elevations are increasing at almost double the rate as, as the global temperatures. And if you, if you live at high latitudes, um, the warming in the Arctic, for example, is four to five times that of, of the global average. So it depends very much on where you live, but we're talking about the global av averages. Um, and so the, the impact, searing heat waves in the US and Europe, devastating floods in Pakistan and Nigeria, millions of people being harmed. So it's very likely that the next big El Nino could take us over 1.5 Celsius, maybe even for the whole year. Um, so this is the head of the long range prediction at the UK Met Office says, the probability of having the first year at 1.5 Celsius in the next five year period is now about 50-50. And that would be having the average of the entire year above 1.5 Celsius. Remember in the 2016, in the first uh, three or four months of the year, we're above 1.5, as I showed you from James Hansen's graph. We know that under climate change, the impacts of El Nino events are going to get stronger, and you have to add that to the effects of climate change itself, which is growing all the time. You put these two things together and we are likely to see unprecedented heat waves during the next El Nino. And the impacts, of course, are seen uh, of the El Nino-La Nina cycle, the ENSO cycle. They're seen in many different regions of the world. You know, science can now tell us when these things are coming months ahead. So we really do need to use this information and be more prepared from having readiness of emergency services right, services right down to what crops to plant. So, so it talks about Hansen in this article. So he said recently, and I showed you the article um, already in the previous video, we suggest that 2024 is likely to be off the chart as the warmest year on record. It's unlikely that the current La Nina will continue a fourth year. Even a little futz of an El Nino should be sufficient for record global temperature. Declining air pollution in China, which blocks the sun because it's a global dimming effect, um, is reducing, the air pollution is reducing, so, that's, so the heating is increasing there also over the land. El Nino, while El Nino would supercharge extreme weather, the degree of exacerbation was under debate. And, and you know, I think this is crazy. Of course, it's going to exacerbate weather. So Bill McGuire at University College London, UK, he said that when El Nino arrives, the extreme weather that has rampaged across our planet in 2021 and 2022 will pale in, in, into insignificance. Those will seem like, like uh, you know, very tame years based compared to what, what's coming up. And I agree completely with that. Professor Tim Palmer at the University of Oxford said, the correlation between extreme weather and global mean temperature is not that strong, but the thermodynamic effects of climate change are going to make the anomalies we get from an El Nino year just that more, much more extreme. So he's kind of like hedging the bets. Climate modeling in Australia shows that the, you know, Australia is likely to swing from three years of above average rainfall to one of the hottest, driest El Nino periods on record with severe heat waves, droughts and fires. In December, the U.S. NOAA, National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration, rated the odds of an El Nino forming by August to October as 66%, okay? The scale of the likely El Nino was as yet unclear. Is it going to be a super El Nino, you know, a flex of one, a weak one? Most, many seasonal forecast models are suggesting the arrival of moderate El Nino conditions from the summer of 2023. Uh, but then how quickly, you know, does it pick up from moderate to super El Nino? Uh, you know, we'll know a lot more as the months proceed this year. The ENSO phenomena is the biggest cause of year-to-year -year differences in weather in many regions. In La Nina years, the east to west Pacific trade winds are stronger, so the warm surface waters are pushed to the west, and that draws up deep cooler water in the east. The El Nino, you know, as I showed in the original diagrams in the last video, 
The El Nino events happen when the trade winds wane, the warm waters spread back eastward, smothering the cooler waters, leading to rising global temperatures, because there's a lot more heat coming out of the, the ocean. Nations bordering the West Pacific be, get hotter and drier because the convection is occurring on the east, away from them. You, you get lots of droughts, lots of wildfires there. India's monsoons and rains in Southern Africa can also be suppressed. Other regions, such as East Africa and the Southern US, uh, can get more rain and flooding. So you get global things happening. And of course, the Amazon in South America, Southern regions are wetter, but the Amazon is drier and it's already approaching a dangerous tipping point. Okay, so we get global effects. So, you know, one of the big unanswered questions was whether climate change favored more El Nino or La Nina events. And I've discussed in it, this in some previous videos and I think um, the, the jury's still out, but I'm, I'm putting my money on more El Ninos happening with uh, climate change. And, uh, you know, we need higher resolution climate models to find this out in advance. And uh, this Palmer is, he's the one who's been calling um, for the establishment of a billion dollar international center for climate modeling, akin to the Large Hadron Collider that allows international particle physics to do together what no single nation can do alone. Okay, so this Guardian article is the key article to have a look at. Um, got loads and loads of stuff in there. So anyway, thank you for listening and uh, please consider donating at PayPal to support my research and videos or look for me on uh, Patreon uh, to, do, to do the same thing. So thanks again for listening and uh, we'll chat soon. Bye for now.